Hello everyone, welcome back to another video or welcome to the channel because I'm expecting a lot of non-regular watchers, viewers of this channel to be watching this video. So welcome to my channel Transport of Perth. It is a very important day, Sunday the 7th of April 2024. And yes, after years and years of waiting, Metronet C-Series new rail cars are finally coming into operation today. We are here at Edgewater Station at 9.30 a.m. and we're heading to Perth Stadium to be on the first ever VIP service running express from Perth Stadium to Whitworth and back to Perth Stadium. I was invited specifically uh, by the Transport Minister's office to be on this service because they know my dedication and with this channel and everything. So we're here now just in time to get the train which is obviously going to be a nice B-series six car on the Junot line and then we'll be taking the Victoria Park Shuttle A-series and then the C-series so we'll take all three trains in a row today now I don't want to film too much because I want this to be quickly and sharp to the C-series so we're just gonna this is just the introduction here at Edge Order I'm just gonna film the B-series come in and then we'll I'll film once we are at Perth now they have actually replaced all Smart Rider processors along the general line as well, including these open ones, but they have the old sound again, because people didn't like the new sound. Anyway, that's just a minor detail, not really related to this video. Um, let's wait for the B-series. Set 65 here. It'll be the first time we feature all three types of trains within less than an hour, pretty much. In just over an hour and riding in them, and 74 on the back. These buttons are not on the C-Series, they're on the doors. And here we are at Perth Station. I'm gonna hop on board the Victoria Park train over here. Set one. So fitting to be on the first ever electric train for Perth on a day we're going on the brand new one. And here we are passing by the Claysburg Rail Depot with the A's and B's. We were on a B, we were on an A, set one, so fitting. And now we cross the Swan River straight into Perth Stadium Station. And the C-Series will be there. Set 130, which is the fourth train they've made, but it's going to be the first one to start services, which is quite annoying because the first A-Series to start was set one, which is this one. The first B-Series to start was the first one at set 49. But now the first C-Series to start is not actually going to be the first one built, which is pretty annoying. But okay, whatever. Here we go. And there it is, on the platform in the middle, three and four, isolated from the, everyone else on the other concourse. I'm gonna come right next to it. Mm -hmm. 
This is Perth Stadium. so many of you, if you've got any suggestions for laws, folks, we can probably do them today, here alone. Um, but thank you very much, but in particular, can I acknowledge the Speaker uh, of the Legislative Assembly, Michelle Roberts, and the President of the Legislative Council, the Honourable Lana Closs, uh, here today as well. The dedicated staff of Metronet and the Public Transport Authority, our contractor, Olsen, uh, along with key suppliers who are here today. The ANWU, um, including the State Secretary, Steve McCartney, who have been integral in terms of our vision and in terms of this journey. Workers from the Bellevue Railcar Manufacturing and Maintenance Facility. Raise your hands, the workers from the, the Bellevue facility. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, give a huge round of applause. I want to thank you all for turning out today. There are, there are hundreds of you here. And, it's fair to say that enthusiasm in Western Australia is alive and well for rail car manufacture and transport. And which is just as well because we've invested billions, literally billions into this project, making sure that we bring, bring Metronet to life, really transforming the way people live and move around this great city. And of course, the new C-Series train that you see on the tracks uh, down here behind us is the first of 41 six-car sets which will be churned, which will be uh, manufactured, churning out over the coming years. It's a beast. It's a high-tech beast. It's got bigger, it's faster, it's more efficient. It's an epic investment in our state and from the tracks to the stations to the trains as well as to our new vibrant communities around it. All of it. All of it. All of that mention there is based upon the belief that world-class infrastructure makes world-class cities. And that world-class city attracts world-class jobs. Businesses want to set up in places where they're well connected, where their workers can get to jobs easily, and where they have an ecosystem where you're bringing the skills and the manufacturing capability to that city. And so it's great that MetroNet can be such an important stimulus for those jobs and those skills. And these new rail cars are an important part of that. But best of all, best of all, they're made here in WA. In Bellevue, to be precise. Just down the road from the Midland Workshop precinct, which for 90 years was the beating heart of Western Australia's rail industry. Generation upon generation worked at Midland, applying their trade. They worked hard, but they were great rewarding jobs. And as we know, 30 years ago, the, third, the Midland workshops were permanently closed. And I know from a, some of the former Midland workshop workers are here with us today. So we salute you and thank you. And I'm really pleased that we're now here to bring your jobs back to life here in Western Australia. And in fact, the jobs that we create here will not only be the jobs of today, they'll be the jobs of the future. Creating building high technology based rail cars which are part and parcel of our interconnected community that we live in today. And of course there are naysayers out there in Western Australia and they've sold us short. They underestimated our determination and in particular the determination of the use of the transport group sat on. She's worked hard to bring this to life and I want to congratulate her. Three decades after the middle workshops closed, we're about to board the brand new Metronet C-Series train for the first time. The decision to bring back manufacturing has met now, rewarding jobs in the rail industry for the current generation. And we also know, we also see a whole range of other Metronet projects taking shape, like the Yanchi, Ellenbrook, the new Midland Station, the Armadale Line, Transformation, and of course, the Bible Extension. <coughs> And these are a really important part of continuing to connect our community. I know, I, 
I'm a parent in Granada. I know my kids constantly rely upon the fact that we live near the Lerlard train station to keep them connected to schools, connected to friends, and you know, and, and my wife and I constantly use the train to make sure that we can get to And you know, I grew up in Western Australia. I grew up in Perth. Public transport has never been our strong point. But today it's a matter of crime. And so I'm so excited to be here to celebrate not only the involving Metronet um, project itself, but the fact that we've brought rail car manufacturing back to Western Australia. And I know you're all desperate to get on board, so I, before we go, I should warn you, these things go fast. It's very fast. It's going to be a great morning. It's going to be an exciting day. And it's going to be one which is a point of pride. A pride in a project that we all have a part in and that we can all look to into the future with a great sense of pride and joy. Have a great day. I also start by acknowledging the, tra the traditional owners and the land of remaining today, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation. This is a very, very exciting day, and there are many people who are here today who know the history of rail manufacturing in WA, but also know the future. And from all those people, the workers on our new rail cars, those that were involved in rail manufacturing in years gone by, to Alston, the manufacturer, to the union who originally campaigned for local manufacturing back in 2016. And to all those passionate public transport supporters who are here, those that um, have lobbied my office to, to be on board, or those that have also, of course, um, won, the, won the ballot to be on board, thank you for coming today. It's a warm day, but it is a very, very exciting day. As the Premier said, this has been a journey. Back in 2016, it was actually Steve McCartney in AMWU who raised the issue of bringing rail car manufacturing back to Western Australia. I went to Victoria and saw what they were doing in 2016. They had a minimum target of 40% local content. We came back and we developed an election commitment, a commitment to bring back rail car manufacturing. And at the time, they said it couldn't be done that we shouldn't be reviving an industry from the bygone era, but we were very committed to bringing back rail car manufacturing to Western Australia. We won the election in 2017, then we went. We went on the program to deliver, and I, can I thank the PTA, particularly Gary Taylor, who's here today, who basically was entrusted in getting the policy underway. Again, people said that no one would be interested. No one would be interested in coming to WA to set up and to bring, whole, and to bring to bring scale of manufacturing, but they were. And again, I'll acknowledge it, Alston, who came to the table. It is very, very, very exciting. It's been a lot of work. And to all those that have made it happen, thank you so much. It is something that we're enormously proud of, enormously. And when you see the trains, look at the trains, they're different. They look different externally and inside, as the Premier said. They're far more modern, more space, and of course, new things like USB ports, but also extra doors. Better facilities for the drivers as well. And can I thank all the drivers who have been undertaking overtime to test these trains for a long time, overnight, weekends, but also making sure that these trains can deliver on the network. As the Premier said, there's extra capacity on the trains as we want to make public transport more and more popular, and we are making it more and more popular, we have extra capacity on the trains to make sure we get more people on the line. And as I said, um, it is uh, the new trains will enter the Joondalup Mandra line. Of course, we've got three big milestones happening this year with Metronet. We've got the um, new Bayswater station fully opening very soon. We have the Anship um, line opening, and of course, we also have the Elmbrook line opening. So, big year for Metronet. As I said, to go through and particularly thank Fabrice from Alton. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with. Um, he landed in February 2020 from Argentina just before COVID, and he was the luckiest man that um, <laughs> that um, exists out in WA. So, he said his family's all here, they're very much now part of the WA community and he's head of the Alstom team. And um, to all the suppliers who have worked really hard to be able to set up, once again, for local manufacturing. As I said, to the PTA, to all of those involved, um, from Peter to Mark Burgess, and of course, 
to the particular directors of our local manufacturing program. As I said, Gary Taylor, the initial project lead. I still remember that conversation at that coffee shop. Pardon? Yeah. Down, down, um, downstairs from the from the transport office, where we said this can be done, let's do it. And that was that commitment that made it all happen. Maybe it was that coffee that made it all happen, Gary. But it was. I, it's one of those points in time when I saw that you, as the public servant in charge of delivering this, had the commitment to get it done. And I was very, very, um, I think, grateful and satisfied that you were there in that in charge at that time. Can I also thank Mick Fitzgerald, John Buck and Ryan McDarby for their work as they continued their commitment. And of course to all the workers um, involved. As I said, there's no prouder moment as a Minister for Transport to be in opposition committing to a major project for people to criticise you saying it couldn't be done, um, to people saying that we shouldn't be doing it, to today being here, seeing our first locally manufactured rail car back in the network, made in WA, a new modern train to help deliver um, pe people moving across the network. Very passionate about Metronet. It will be connecting people, creating affordable transport and letting people move around our cities and suburbs for, dec for decades and generations to come and something we should be very proud of. Can I thank the Premier, can I thank the former Premier and all of our Cabinet colleagues who facilitated um, this, um, this, uh, this commitment, this dream. And can I thank everyone involved in getting it done. Thank you very much. And here we are on the Eastern Concourse, entering for the C-Series. For the first time. It's even on the screens. Here it is. Let me open it. On board the C Series. <laughs> Special event still. I'm going out, guys. <laughs> this is the cab. There's an A series over there. Wish Riley's going on that one and the other people didn't get the ticket. It's so long. This is insane, bro. It's literally so long. Now we have a good perspective of exactly how long it is when it's empty. I'm gonna walk the whole length. It takes like a minute to walk it. And only that is halfway. And we've already been walking for over 30 seconds. Over here. And we still keep on going. And the weirdest thing is actually the front door is also right next to the cab, which is so strange, in my opinion. See, look at that.
doors closing. Departing Perth Stadium. And this is where we're supposed to be. Whoa. I'll film the full return journey, not this direction though. Passing through Claysbrook now. Okay, just took a few photos with the transport minister here and the premier. We're now passing through Central Perth Station in service on a C series. <laughs> So weird with the white lighting in the dark. It's gonna be so different to night. Yeah. Let's test out the seats. These ones aren't comfortable, but those ones are. Yeah, it's okay. As long as I can rest my hand on here. They're actually pretty hard though, compared to what I remember from the mock-up. towards Leaderville station now. We're gonna run express all the way down half the general line to Whitford. I'm not sure if we're going to the siding or if we're just gonna cross over and go into platform one to go back. It's probably dynamic based on how much light there is outside. Leaderville Station. So empty in this part and then so packed down there. Excuse me, kids, who are you with? Who are you with? Um, oh no, the staff just asked us to come up here. Yeah, who's who's your responsible parents who you get no, they're down there somewhere. Yeah. Sorry? Your brother? My, my mama. Your mom and my dad. Yeah. They're just down there somewhere. Near real station. Um, 
go to church channel. Hard to film out the windows though. They're pretty narrow. Maybe over here. Down the middle of the freeway. Yep, crossover, no siding. Arriving into Whitford Station, we're crossing over onto the other platform. There's a normal train which is waiting at the siding just for us to come through, so it's gonna be like five minutes late. There's someone there. Here we are at Whitford Station. There's normal passengers obviously on the platform, they're so confused. <laughs> Not in service! <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> oh, yeah, they shouldn't. Yes. Yeah, good. Doesn't work. Good. And we're already departing. It's three minutes for that service. Okay, let's try to film the full journey back to the stadium now. I'll sit down over here. We delayed their service by like seven minutes. So the seats are pretty good, a little narrow, but they have a headdress now, even though it's probably going to get pretty dirty being cloth. That's okay. They have a cutout for your knees. And they have side and transverse seating all the way through. The three doors is really the biggest difference. And wider doors. Yeah. <laughs> 
surely we can go faster now because the train's literally 15 minutes ahead the next one. Yes, we're going faster. Come on, let's get to a proper speed now. All the time. Yes, now we're going the proper speed. Look at this, full speed through Greenwood. Now the limit's 110 here. Now look at the old photographer on the bridge. We are going at pretty good speed now. More people. There's people on like every bridge. <laughs> Off we go. <laughs> Can't wait for the full day tomorrow going down to Mandra and all the announcements and stuff. Warwick. <laughs> this is a really good speed now. Why is there such a traffic jam? Can't wait for all the countless hours I'll be spending on this train in the future. In these seats. Especially at night time, it's gonna be so special. <laughs> With the white lighting. Yeah. 
Joe Wall. We're in the neutral section. <laughs> the neutral section. <laughs> Sterling Station. That was the driver who drove it this way, like the other way. <laughs> train now. Just first we go through Glendalum. Go for a walk through. What's going to be really confusing is the emergency button is on the side of the door while the new button to open the doors in the middle and people are gonna think it's here as for old habit and literally press the emergency button. Hello, hello. hello. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> are you uploading a video? Yes, would you like to yeah. be on it? Hello. We're gonna be in it. <laughs> Lots of people here fans of the rail network. I'm so glad they put the black line here now, not here. Makes so much more sense. Why is standing in here prohibited? What's gonna happen? In the B series, like they always... Actually, does the middle of it move now as well? Because like on the B series, it's like one side moves, like the whole thing, not, not from the middle. Yeah. I don't know. Let's continue walking through. You can see how crazily long this is. And we didn't even start in the last car. Full six car walkthrough is insane. 
literally just doesn't end. Leader Little Station. So that was only four carriages we walked through and it's already so long. They're still longer than anything you could have ever walked in the past on the Perth trains. And around the Leaderville Bend. Never thought how long it would feel being full walk through. There's the back. And again we're going to the dark tunnel. This is what it'll feel like at night. White lighting, not yellow like all the current trains. Yeah, but we go straight over to the Fremantle track. Let's go to the gangway as we cross over again. No, 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 the middle doesn't move yet, so it's just both sides of it move though. There we go. Yeah, it's just coming in from the layover. Now apparently the middle doors on each carriage are classified as inaccessible. There's no wheelchair symbol on them on the inside or outside and people got an email about that. Even though there is space for the wheelchairs here, but there's a better actually marked spot of the outer doors of each carriage. Okay, about to go back through Perth again. Platform 6, A series. A series, boo, A series, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
get away. You don't want to be serious. You don't like to be serious. Because someone else will say. What's Chris? Are you serious? Why not the be serious? Well, do you like, not like the look of them? I was like an angry train. They were recording. <laughs> And the sea series, and also you also forgot to reroute the Australian. And my best plan was to terminate it at Fremantle to go Fremantle South Beach. You can't do that. The wrong track gauge. Well, there is a right track gauge. The Australian train is narrow gauge. Fremantle tracks are standard gauge. There is a dual gauge track in Fremantle. Yes, but it can't go around like that. You have to go through the tunnel as a diesel train as well. You can't do that. It will suffocate everyone in the and, and the bridges are too high, are too narrow. On this one border, Cheers, MacIver. No, he's in Japan for to his home until July. Is Pigeon's name Francois? Yes. What's his last name? Demonshaw. Demonshaw. Your last name's Stephanus. Yes. And do you have a brother? Yes. What's your brother's name? Kai and Flynn. Do they go to Don Craig? No, they they go to other schools. Do you go to you go to Don Craig? Yes. You're year twelve. Yes. What day's your birthday? February twelfth. February twelfth. Mine's April five. Yes. Okay. That was just two days ago. Yeah. And though the old dot, the old dot matrix at Claysbrook is now the screen time to yeah. and the last one at Oak Street is now dead. Yep. And Anyway, you can see there's a lot of enthusiastic people, or, yeah, just special people on board the train. <laughs> oh, sorry. B-Series, Midland, B-Series, why, why does it say Midland? Midland line is closed, bro, who did that? What? What? <laughs> Did you see that? What the hell? There is a B series at Placeburg that said Midland. What? Close your eyes. Open now. No. It's open tomorrow. With the Bayswater station opening. Okay. This journey is coming to an end. We are now going to go back to the southern side of the river and terminate at. At um, Perth Stadium Station. <laughs> Across the Swan River in a sea series. Hello. Hello. Are you from the city? Yes. Why? Why did my the light go off? I remember the audio when I was watching. The lights were all off. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't learned everything about this train yet, so it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. It is now 11 no, 55 a.m. Pretty much 50 minutes, as they said, because we left at 11.05, a little earlier than they originally said. We're back at 
Pratt Stadium. Let's listen to the door beeping sound again. Wait, are there door buttons that you can't press them before you've stopped? Oh no, is it like the European trains as well, where you can't press it before you've stopped, you can only press it once you've stopped? That's so annoying. See, they just press it and it's not going to open now, is it? Wait, hang on, can you, can you hold it? I want to see if it opens if you press it before. No, it doesn't. That's so bad. Terminated at Press Stadium. That is the worst thing about this train that I just found out. The doors are like European style. You can't press them before you reach the station, only when you reach the station. I am very disappointed at that. I really do enjoy that you can press it before. But oh well, a lot of things are also good about it. Arrived. Nice.